Today it's time for a professional match of StarCraft 2 and what I've got for you is a Terran versus Terran where we find ourselves on the map Lightshade. Now, I've got a feeling, and this really is just a gut feeling of mine, but I've got a feeling that both of these Terran players in this specific game are the most popular Terran players out there currently. Do you think that's fair? I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are the best of the best. I mean, they are obviously in the upper echelons of StarCraft 2. But there's obviously Cure and Maru and Innovation and TY. There's a whole load of great Terran players out there. But I really do feel like both of these players are requested to me more often than, than any others. I think so. Anyways, spawning here in the bottom right corner of the map and playing with the blue SCVs from South Korea. We have Byun and his opponent in the opposite corner with the red Terran SCVs from, uh, from France. We're looking at none other than Clem's main command center. Alrighty. Now, I know nothing about this particular game other than the fact that it's a really long match right here on Lightshade, which is actually rather uncommon. Ooh, okay. I was just gonna say, Lightshade has a, a relatively short rush distance, so the rush distance on this particular map is comparable to Submarine. I haven't really casted a whole lot of games on Submarine recently, it seems. It's certainly not the most popular map in the current map pool. Uh, by far, actually, the least played one. But anyways, the rush distance on, on this specific map is very similar to Submarine, even though Submarine feels a lot smaller. I guess it's I guess it's because of the fact that this this map it, it yeah it allows you to expand away from your opponent, so it's relatively easy to take more bases. But at the very least, going from natural to natural is pretty quick. Alrighty, so it's gonna be a a double barracks opener right here from Clem versus a single barracks here from Bjorn. Don't know exactly if Bjorn picked up on this already. I guess he sees the lack of expansion on the low ground, so maybe this is enough. I mean, every once in a while we see Terran players making their CC inside of the main base and then floating it on over. Uh, I guess that's pretty uncommon at the pro level right now, though, so... Even uh, seeing the lack of command center there may already be enough for Bjorn to start up a bunker. Now, he does need to start up a bunker, by the way, if he wants to defend against this. Maybe the... Uh, okay, I guess the scouting SCV is gonna be the one that's gonna be tasked with building that structure. He's gonna need it though, because obviously Clem at this point is gonna be able to pump out two of those Reapers uh, at a time here, which is, you know, it's pretty scary. Marina's gonna come up here. There's the Reaper. Ooh. Clem did get the first hit, but luckily Jimmy over here joined in as well, which makes it a bit easier for Bjorn to defend for now. I think with a double barracks opener, you're probably looking to get about, I don't know, four or five SCVs or so. Otherwise, it's it's hard to justify that second barracks so easily. Uh, I don't think that this one is going to be killed, though. The one that's building the uh, the bunker over here. Nah. So, obviously, now he can pop into the main base. This is something that Bjorn knows as well. Factory is going to finish up shortly, so he's going to be able to go into a Hellion here right away. There you go. Which is nice. Not really getting any kills so far, but there we go. Okay, he's going to start picking them off. Should be able to get the second one. Nice. Ooh, pulls a couple of SCVs here. Bjorn, that is to try and uh, get this around. A little bit of lost mining time here so far, and now that the, yeah, the defensive units are gone, I guess that Bjorn can get some work done. Hellion, though, yeah, I was gonna say, should be popping out of that uh, that factory. But he's already got five kills. I think this, yeah, I think this pays for itself here. If you can get a sixth one, that would be nice. Ooh, there you go, nicely done. Clem gets six worker kills right here in total. And obviously, when you go for that second barracks, your factory, or sorry, your uh, command center, your second command center, that is, is going to be a little bit later. So despite the fact that we did see Bjorn just now losing a whole bunch of SCVs, uh, you can see the income, right? It's it's pretty much dead even, and that's just because that yellow mining machine here, number two, comes out a little bit quicker uh, than uh, the one for Clem will. So all things considered, I do think we are going to be finding ourselves in a relatively even game so far. Just a little bit of micro, kind of ironic actually that it's Clem who's opening up with the uh, the Reapers in this particular case. Obviously, he does save himself the cost right now of that second uh, that second barrack, so he can just make the reactor here and start pumping out those Marines three at a time. Okay, so let's see what exactly is the follow up going to be. There is going to be a uh, a factory here producing a cyclone, which is nice. I think it's gonna be needed as well because these two Hellions, yeah, the fire trucks are pretty good when it comes to killing Marines, obviously. Lock on though, right here with the Cyclone, so, ooh, okay. One of them will be sacrificed. You can see its wheel right there still rolling away. Couple workers here in total have gone down, but really nothing all too crazy. Biondo apparently looking here to continue the pressure for a little while longer. Okay, he does have a medevac right now joining the fray as well, which I do like. There's a couple of nice siege tank positions on this map. So we've seen siege tanks over here, for example, which is very, very annoying to have to deal with. 
quite a common uh, approach in this particular uh, or on this particular map rather. There's the third command center, by the way, for Klim. Okay. Yeah, I think that's exactly what he's going to do. Okay. So this is a bit of a tricky position to break. Basically, what you do is you can walk your units right now behind the mineral line, right? And since Klim decided to go for a relatively late siege tank production of his own, he's not going to be able to break this all too quickly. As you can see a little bit of lost mining time right there for Klim. Eventually, though... Usually what we see is Clem is gonna be able to like produce enough stuff to just break out of this. Stim pack for him is gonna finish up in just a couple of seconds. And obviously when Stim is done... Assuming the command center stays alive at the very least. But uh, you know, if, if Stim is done, you can just Stim forward and get some damage in. Now I do like this though. Bjorn bringing the second siege tank as well. Bit of a gamble. You never really know exactly if there's any, you know, medevex along, uh, along the path towards your natural expansion. But there we go. Stim has been activated and Clem is gonna try and break this. Now... Is there going to be enough, though, for the Frenchman to go through this? He gets one of the tanks. Nope. Reinforcements will be needed. The units got picked up. But uh, this is going to be a little bit obnoxious for a little while longer. But I do believe that Clem is going to be able to break out of this here eventually. I mean, even if it's just based off of the fact that this game is a pretty long one. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if this is something that he's going to end up losing. Because usually, if you end up losing the natural, that's basically game over. All right. Interference Matrix is done here, actually, for that Raven, so not bad. Hmm. In the meantime, on the side of the Terran player in blue, we have double NG Bay here as a follow-up. Third Command Center, though, quite a bit later. You can see already, despite the fact that Clem right now is losing a couple of SCVs, it's relatively, you know, easy to catch up on, right? So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Bjorn certainly is in a good position right now, but... It's not like this is already game-ending amounts of damage. He needs to be careful, though. He can't really overstay his welcome, right? So at some point, I mean, you can just stim forward here and try to get some work done. I think that's exactly what we're going to see once again. Wave number two here for Clem. Does he have enough this time around? Ooh, okay. Good luck on there. Drops off the siege tank at the last possible moment. So right before it would have gone down, but it doesn't matter. Because everything gets cleaned up, regardless. So yeah, Bjorn certainly did overstay his welcome there. We see that all the time in this particular matchup. The thing is, right, you need to always ask yourself, do you want to stay or do you want to go home, right? Denying mining time over here, for example, is fantastic. So what this Raven is doing here is super nice. You basically just wait right now until it runs out and then you send the SCVs back. Uh, but yeah, even if it comes at the, the cost of losing like 10, 15 supply, oftentimes it's still worth it to just stay out there for a little while longer. Because it, uh, it makes it difficult for Clem to start up any counter-aggression. And obviously, you might get a couple more SCVs here and there. Okay. So. Clem now is going to be the one who's probably got more siege tanks, right? Oh, actually, no. He's slightly behind, actually. He's got one siege tank less. Regardless, his siege tanks are in nice positions. Love the fact, actually, that there's also now a Liberator. So maybe you can siege that one up. Uh, is that in range? I don't think it is. Uh, I'm not sure if it was, but it doesn't matter. Either way, Clem does have the siege tanks right now on the low ground, which is nice. These wheels here aren't going to be in a range, so you got to get those unsieged. Ooh. Siege tank on the high ground, though. Two siege tanks, that is. Going to get a, a little bit of work done. And I wonder right now if it's going to be Clem who's going to be overstaying his welcome. Obviously, alternatively, you can always fly the third CC, indeed, up north. I was just going to bring that up. He didn't make his in his natural, so it's a relatively short flight on over towards the northern location. So it's really an eye for an eye so far, right? We saw Clem expanding a little bit later earlier on, then he got the start a little bit faster. Supply-wise, things are pretty much even. Wouldn't be surprised here to see uh, relatively even unit counts as well. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> 29 Marines each. Now, once again, Clem gets in a good position here. This is difficult to break here for Bjorn. I mean, it's going to cost him a bunch of Marines. At the same time, this third base is in a world of trouble. There are a couple of Vikings here, which is nice, but... Uh, you know what? He might just be able to get the third CC. If he gets the third CC, that would be a disaster. Bjorn has to basically commit here to fighting this, because otherwise the command center goes down. Siege tanks are unsieged. I think eventually there's going to be enough. There we go. Okay. And with that, Bjorn is going to be able to push those units back. Guess whose turn it is now? <laughs> it's like the reverse Uno card just being thrown around here the whole time. It's like your turn. No, it's my turn. This is actually like Terran versus Terran. I've compared it to chess many times, right? Because it's very strategic and it's all about position and all that. Right now, it's also apparently turn-based. <laughs> A turn-based Terran versus Terran. I mean, it's still real-time, but... 
a TT, uh, TTS? Real-time strategy? RTS? TTS? Turn-based strategy? Or, I don't know. Here we go. No, it's TBS, obviously. What in the world am I thinking? Counting and abbreviations? Not even once! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Beyond, don't overstay, okay? Don't stay too long, my man. We've seen what happens. Couple times now. It's crazy to me how the supply counts are still so even, right? Look at that. They're so in sync. 4th CC has been started up for Clem, though, which is nice. 2-2, two, two, relatively even as well. I mean, there's a couple seconds of difference here, but really not too crazy. I'm glad that we can zoom out so far these days in StarCraft 2. Like, back in the earlier days of StarCraft 2, you couldn't zoom out at all. So, for those of you wondering, I get this question all the time. If you hit hotkey Z, so Z on the keyboard, you can zoom out this far. And if you hit shift Z, you can go a little bit further. So, this is the furthest I can go. But, uh, especially with these siege tank battles, right? Being able to see both of them on the screen. On one screen, that is. Super helpful. They are, are dug out the, or digging out the trenches right now, right? Just sitting there, waiting until the opponent gets close. Okay. Now, the sensor tower's here. Super helpful. So even though Bjorn didn't see the units there, he saw the little blip right down the radar. He saw the little red icon. It indicates to him that something was close. So he can see those as well from your opponent, right? So right here, for example, for... Uh, for Mr. Bjorn, he can see that exactly this circle is where his opponent is going to be able to spot all incoming units. Very helpful. Because, of course, Terran players are not as flexible as, say, for example, Zerk. They need to make sure they get their units in the right spot at the right time. Now, Bjorn at this point going for some multi-pronged harassment. Apparently tries to push up the high ground here while simultaneously coming in with a bunch of Marines here from the right side. Whole lot of units over here will be killed, although I think a bunch of Marines there in red ended up going down as well. Is there going to be enough right now for Bjorn to push through this? No. He decides to back off. That was an attempt, though. One thing you always have to worry for here as well is uh, flybys into the main base. There's not enough medevacs over here, but it can be very dangerous. And once again, the supply count. Look at the supply count. Pretty awesome. You can see how close the skill level is, right? Okay. So I was just talking about it. He's uh, scooting around the edge right there of the sensor tower. Here's the medevac drop heading towards what seems to be the main base. This way you can set up some third... Ooh, some third base or, or three-pronged aggression as well. Ooh, nice cleanup though. Clem found his opponent sitting out there. Still for a little while longer. Managed to get the kill. Very nice. Um... Hmm. I mean... This drop actually not achieving that much. Gotta be careful, obviously. On this map, you can relatively easily make it out of there as well. So, Bjorn has decided to forgo a fourth command center for now, right? So, instead, he's gonna be floating his main base on over towards the low ground base, whereas we already see a fourth command center here for Clem. So, this is a big deviation. Despite the fact that the supply count here is dead even, it's very important to note that, I think. Ooh, nice. Perhaps a couple siege tanks here. Gets a third one as well. Oh my god, all right. There's the bulldozer. Bjorn got himself a, uh, a whole lot of kills there, and that all of a sudden puts him a f uh, in a phenomenal spot. If you decide to forego another command center, obviously you're going to be able to spend those minerals on other things, right? In this, particular case, that's a, in this particular case, that's a lot of marines. So right now we're talking 87 marines here for Bjorn, versus only, well, 41 at this point here for Clem. Once again, multi-pronged harassment, you need to always be splitting units against Clem. I feel like I actually called Bjorn Clem earlier, did I? I may have gotten my naming wrong here at some point, I'm not sure. Anyways, Bjorn goes back into the main base. Mm, okay. It's hard to uh, dedicate enough units at the right place, right? So you can see right here the spread of siege tanks. Is Clem gonna have enough? Ooh, to defend all of this. Well, here comes Bjorn, apparently. Oh my god, I don't know if I like that move. <laughs> that were a lot of Marines that were just thrown away right there by the South Korean Terran player. Okay. Here it comes again. This time around he does decide to back off and he's trying to bait the units in red into the range right there of those siege tanks. Good splits as well by Clem, but still a couple of these will flow or, or float through the air. 
on their way home. They didn't quite make it. Ooh, command center goes down though, and that's nice. Bjorn immediately picks up, heads on over towards the main base here. Oh no, that medevac. What? Really? Oh! Alright, that was very lucky. Clem tried to, uh, tried to get the final hits there, but he just barely didn't get it. Okay. Now all of a sudden, I guess we have three command centers going up against three command centers, huh? Planetary Fortress is really nice. I mean, especially with plus three infantry weapons, which is where Bjorn is at right now. He's gonna be able to bite through those bases pretty easily, but it's still a difficult situation to be in. You can see right now, Bjorn is the aggressor, right? For quite some time already. Once more though, if you uh, split up a lot of units, yeah, I love this! You can easily get overwhelmed here. There's a bunch of siege tanks on the high ground. Clem right now trying to bait his opponent into those high ground uh, siege tanks as well. Uh, okay, ooh. Didn't quite realize what was going on inside of the main base, but the plus three armor upgrade here for Clem did get sniped, which is a problem. Luckily for him though, he did manage to finish up the plus three attack, which is by far the most important upgrade. But in these straight up marine battles, I mean, yeah. Oh my god, is he gonna get another siege to- Oh my god, uh, Okay, almost got himself another CC. That would have been actually a problem here for Clem. Two command centers is not great. Three command centers is playable, but two command centers is a problem. I think that Bjorn is not done yet, though. He's smelling blood in the water right now. He wants to try and see if he can break through this. Is he gonna push the stim pack button once again? Is he gonna try and just... You know, throw away a bunch more marines? I mean, it looks to me like he's setting himself up for a stim. Oh. Ooh. See, the problem is we know that there's only three tanks here, right? He doesn't. You can scan, but it's still difficult to gauge exactly when units spawn. There's a whole bunch of tanks actually over here. Wouldn't mind seeing one of them maybe over there. Would not be a bad spot, I don't think, but anyways. So Bjorn, once again, is creating a line over here. Now, we've seen this a couple of times already in this particular match. When you sit here for too long, it's very difficult. Ooh, apparently this is the moment? Uh? Okay, no, 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 no. Decides to back off once again. Just denying the mining over here is apparently all he really looks for. Bjorn currently at a uh, very nice supply advantage. He's got himself way more army here as well, which is really nice. Another marine stims forward. And here we go. Apparently this is the moment the boys have been pulled as well by Clem. He's going to sacrifice a whole lot of SCVs to try and break this position. The question is, is there going to be enough to do so? I think there is. All of the tanks from Bjorn will get shut down, but at the cost of 26 SCVs. Hmm. I mean, the alternative was just never mining that base again, right? Which is not great. The problem is, this is creating a bit of an all-in scenario right now for Clem. At this point, it's difficult to actually justify spending more money on making SCVs, because you have such limited amounts of resources. Now, I love this. Bjorn, actually, pretending like he's retreating, but here he comes for more. Oh my god. Awesome move here by Bjorn. Gets the third command center here regardless, and this is now a problem, right? Bjorn, even though he wasn't making additional command centers earlier, he's now got another base down below. I guess that's his old natural, actually, but he's got a fourth... Wait, no, wait! He's only still on three CCs. He's just mining them all from different bases. Never mind. I thought for a second he added on a fourth, but it's still just the three bases. Insane. Love the fact, obviously, that those structures can fly on over and mine other locations as well. Regardless, while well, right now, apparently, it's gonna be Clem who's on the offensive. Trying to kill a bunch of SCVs. Does he know about the base down south? He does not! This base currently is unscouted. Biondo is inside of his main base, so it's difficult to... Oh my god, he, so, he can so easily kill that. He can so easily kill that. Anyways, he doesn't really know exactly what his opponent is doing right now, right? And while you're multitasking at 100 different spots at once, the drop in the main base even gets denied here. It's difficult to look around for everything. Biondo is getting a lot of damage done, right? He's right on top of the Terran production here, so Clem is losing pretty much everything. Beyond at this point, well, 50 supply up, right? That's a phenomenal amount. Oh my god, I feel so bad here for Clem. This, this would have been a, a really, really nice way to get back into this specific match. He does just, he, he just doesn't see it. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, a couple more uh, supply depots here as well. You can lose a couple, but... <laughs> you can lose a few of them. Now, one thing that Clem does have here is that he's got way more siege tanks. Yeah, look at this. 
Ooh, couple Marines here coming in from the back as well, trying to get a tank. Nope, not quite. 12 siege tanks versus 4. That is something worth noting. It's difficult to push forward, obviously, with siege tanks, but Clem right now is leapfrogging them three at a time. Eh? Vikings now getting some shots in as well at one of those command centers. I think it will go down, yeah. So Bjorn now effectively on two base economy. The SCVs were already heading on over towards their new base, but there's nothing to return those minerals to other than, well, I guess this expansion here. Man, the fact that Clem didn't see that base down south really sucks for him. Okay. Ooh, apparently what Bjorn is gonna do is just evacuate everything and go on over towards that spot. Uh, I don't know if I like it. I guess it's easier to defend when you're mostly marine-based because Clem has to go uphill. Yeah, okay, Clem is gonna be able to grab another tank. Well, ugh. He was looking for it anyway. How many Metavex does Bjorn have? Okay, he still doesn't- well, now I have three. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say he still has four. Hmm. Okay. Clem in the meantime, by the way. I mean, despite the fact that he lost all of his production, normally that's game over for a Terran. He's now slowly rebuilding a little bit of it. He's got himself another command center that apparently he's expanding south with. Nicely done. Adding on the supply depots that he lost inside of his main base. I just want to clarify that one little mistake here makes it so that the game is over, right? These guys make it look easy, but it's very easy to accidentally lose everything. Now look at these siege tanks as well. Yes, he's got a high siege tank count, but a lot of these are just about to get picked off. A little bit of friendly fire and all of these, like, all of these units <laughs> get picked off and will disappear. Okay. So, Clem is trying to uh, tighten the noose at this point, right? He's trying to see if he can kill this base, and apparently that one is in range right there from that high ground siege tank position. If he kills that base, Bjorn basically has no income other than the base at the 6 o'clock. Bjorn, though, apparently not interested in fighting that army. Instead, he's gonna go, ooh, for the newly acquired planetary. Gets there, though, as the planetary is finishing. And that means that he's not gonna be able to finish that with just marines for now. He's bringing a couple of siege tanks of his own, though. And, uh, well, I've seen this before, right? <laughs> Even though they were previously on the high ground here, this is still a, uh... A nice position here for Bjorn to be attacking from. Clem in a bit of an awkward spot. Pretty sure he would love to have these units at home, but Terran just simply not capable of getting home that quickly. No recall, no Zorkling speed. Okay, tanks over here will be cleaned up, and that's important because that means that Clem is going to be able to keep that command center alive for a little while longer. Did Clem see the spot? Oh my god, he still has not spotted the base at the 6 o'clock. Oh my god, well here we go. Bjorn has got a tremendously large army, and I think this is Bjorn. Oh, ho, ho, breaking through that position. Loads of siege tanks go down, and once again, the reason for that is because Clem is assuming that his opponent is broke. Right? He's looked around, he hasn't found any other bases, he knows that this base is up here, he knows that there's no ba- Like, he knows that there's not a whole lot, so at this point, alarm bells must start going off in his head. Yeah, there you go. If my opponent was capable of producing that many marines, either, either his macro sucked, right, and he had a thousand minerals sitting in a bank, which is unlikely, or there's another base. Okay. That means that once again, look at the armies, look at the supply counts here. It's insane. Actually crazy. Pretty much dead even the whole game long. Bjorn catches a couple of siege tanks, grabs all of the siege tanks, which is fantastic. Still loses a lot of marines in the process, but if you can uh, fall back to tanks, that's nice. Well, I mean, that's a big if. There's actually no tanks right now available here at all for the South Korean Terran. SCVs are now going to be pulled away from the mineral line once again. Love the landed Viking in there as well, though. It's going to be picked off relatively easily. Clem is still going to be able to grab a couple of SCVs. Now, if you look at this objectively right now, I'm seeing three command centers here for Clem versus only a singular base. For Bjorn. He does have a... You know, a base with some mules and stuff, which is nice. But there's still an orbital available here for Clem as well. Income. I mean, income-wise it is. This should start looking better and better for Clem here as the game progresses. Look at the dance. <laughs> when there's no siege tanks, this is so awkward. Neither player really could afford siege tanks here for a little bit. So they're just dancing. 
<laughs> They're playing uh, Marine Chicken. Where the first player to stim is gonna be the one that gets to decide the pacing of the battle. Well... Clem is gonna come in. He's gonna force his opponent to stim as well. Siege tank! Oh, it gets a bunch of shots off, and this is really nice right now, I think, for Clem. That being said, though, Bjorn does manage to break through that position because of the Cold Cave, right? 14 SCVs, though. That right now knocks back Bjorn... Uh, or it knocks back... Uh, it knocks back... A <laughs> <laughs> Over the last week, I've been streaming before making YouTube videos. Normally, I make YouTube videos first, and then I stream. What I'm trying to say is that I'm recording this right now at the end of the day. Which is a little bit different than recording first thing in the morning. What I tried saying, though, is that Bjorn's economy was knocked back to early game eco, right? Beginning of the game eco. There it is. Third time's the charm, baby. I got it. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Next thing I'm gonna tell you is that I'm actually human. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not human. I'm a robot. Okay, Siege Tank is gonna come up here for Clem once again. He's already got one here in the back. Did he, by the way? Yeah, he did, he did remake plus three. Uh, Bjorn, I don't know if I like it. Yeah, those Siege Tank shots are so critical, though. Grabbing a free tank is nice. He does have the superior Marine count right now. 33 versus only 19. And once again, Bjorn manages to get on top of his opponent's production. Now, the production of a Terran player, I've said this many times before, but it's the soft underbelly, right? It's the soft underbelly right here of the Terran. And when you can kill their production and snipe the units as they come out, yeah, that's exactly where you want to be. A siege tank will be sent on over towards this location, and I guess it's going to force Bjorn to back off. Well, he's going to go into the main base. He already was there previously, though, so he knows that there's nothing else. Does have enough, except for Jimmy, apparently, even though there was space over there. That it just didn't like Jimmy very much. Um, he does have enough uh, Metavex right now to just boost on out of there. Okay. So, despite the fact right now that Clem has got more income here than his opponent, he doesn't have anything to produce, right? So he's making a couple new structures, putting them next to a planetary fortress this time around, which I think is smart. But yeah, he's only got a handful of units here to, uh, to uh, build at a time. Biondo, he's got a lot of structures, but no income. I think I still favor Clem's position here because of it. As you can see right now, Bjorn has apparently decided that it's just gonna be Marines, right? He's got a little bit of gas income, but not a whole lot. New command center apparently was produced during all of this as well. There's no medevac over here. Well, there's one flying on over. Eh. Makes it difficult to stim, right? If you uh, lose like 20% of your army every single time you stim. Because <laughs> you don't have medevacs. Okay. Another planetary here. Apparently, uh, slow and steady wins the race, though, right? I think this is really clever by Clem. I think many of us would have felt obligated to go in for a push right now, but Clem is like, no, I'm just gonna morph into planetary, put up a couple of siege tanks, force my opponent to engage me instead. I mean, Bjorn can't engage in there. There's planetaries everywhere where he wants to fight, and Marines alone are just not gonna cut it. How can you break through this? Wow, this has been an insane back and forth match. I love it. Jimmy over here. Wow. Jimmy, you absolute madman. He's got a story to tell about a campfire, assuming he actually uh, makes it until the end of this match. <laughs> Jimmy, just go hide, man. Stop scouting. Don't do it, Jimmy. It's not worth it. Stop using your combat drugs. All right. He scouts the low ground. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Clem. Yeah, he's going to force the issue right now. This is Clem saying, get off my lawn. And with that. Bjorn is forced to tap out. Now, the real question is, can we back up here for a second? No, hold up. Back up two seconds then. I need to follow Jimmy's route. Okay, here's Jimmy. All right, all right, slow it down again. Does Jimmy live through this, okay? He's got two hit points and a dream. Oh! <laughs> Unnecessary there, Bjorn! Just because you're about to lose the game doesn't mean you should just go ahead and kill Jimmy like that. Alright, well... Even though Jimmy was about half a second away from uh, staying alive. Okay, more like five seconds away from staying alive until the end of the match. Apparently, it was not meant to be.
Hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I post Monday through Saturday to my main channel, and I try to post every single day, sometimes even multiple times to my second channel, which is youtube.com slash moreloco. And uh, it's the channel where I post completed playthroughs of games that I've streamed on Twitch. Link is down below in case you're interested. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.